hour of 6 o'clock having arrived, I'll call to order the meeting of our Common Council for Tuesday, February 6, 2024. Clerk? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. We have 12 members in the room and 12 members present and voting in the second clerk. Very good. Now please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for an invocation offered by Alder Weary. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Lord, help us to see good in others. Help us to be kind and patient. Most of all, help those who are lost to find their way. Amen. All right. Uh, approval of the minutes. So moved. Yeah. Motion was made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens to approve the minutes. Any changes here? Seeing none, all in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin. Uh, any amendments here? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The agenda has been approved. Report by the mayor. Um, just a couple of quick things. Just want to thank the YMCA. There's, a, there's an echo in here. That's all right. There we go. Special thanks to Alder Stevens for the tech support. <clears throat> um, just wanted to, to note my appreciation for the YMCA. They're having a, a great uh, Black History Month celebration. The food smelled terrific. I wasn't able to stick around to actually eat it. Uh, but also a, a good number of panelists there. Uh, so looking forward to a good discussion that, that they'll be having. Um, so just want to thank them uh, for putting on the, the event and, and for the invitation. Unfortunately, you know, we're all over here doing uh, official business, but, uh, but nice thing that they pulled together. Um, also, just speaking of events, I know all of our council members are aware of this, but wanted to throw out the invitation to the wider public uh, for a Founders Day celebration on February 27th. Um, so we are... We're really much older than 170 years by all kinds of different uh, measurements, but um, as, as an official city, um, by action of the state legislature, we'll be 170 years, February 27th, and so I want to invite everybody, uh, especially those who are history-minded, like Alder Stoyer, uh, to come and celebrate uh, a bunch of great milestones that, that we've experienced over the years and also highlight um, some, some good people in the community, some great projects. Uh, we'll be doing the, um, the Beautification Awards as part of the ceremony as well, so a lot of good things to, to recognize. So you are all invited, but there's limited space, um, so RSVP ASAP. Uh, with that, we'll move along to announcements. Alder Morgan. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I'm not a veteran. I was not in the military, but through my work and stuff, I've gotten pretty close with a lot of the VFW and the American Legion posts in this area. And they contacted me, and this morning I had the pleasure of going to a burial out at Fort Howard Cemetery. It was for a gentleman named Patrick Mogensen. He was 88 years old. He uh, lived in Green Bay went to Catholic Central High School, went to St. Norbert's College. When he graduated, he joined the Air Force, spent a few years in Japan, was uh, honorably discharged in 1961. The reason I went to this and that they let me know is uh, this gentleman had no family. He had no one there other than a few of these Legion and uh, VFW people that showed up and myself and couple other people that got to know about it and it was a beautiful ceremony they did the taps did the full honors and uh, I'm so glad I went there and it's something that uh, I hope our veterans aren't forgotten and that uh, I just wanted to make a mention of that we must treasure these people they are the ones that gave us all our freedoms and fought for us many of them died for us so that's all I wanted to say well said thanks Alder thanks for being there to represent yourself and, and the city. Uh, other announcements? Alder Scannell? Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, piggyback on your announcement for uh, Black History Month. There is a display by Sharon Harper. I think many people know who she is here. Out at UWGB in the Phoenix Room this Thursday from 10 a.m. to 6. So if you can be there, cool. Great. 
Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Weir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, you know, here we go again. Uh, I'm going to read part of a court transcript from the city's overturned disorderly conduct charge versus Attorney Janet Angus. And these are the words of Judge Tammy Joe Hawk, not mine. Well, the city has not met its burden. This is a case where the city has to prove that the defendant, Miss Angus, engaged in violent, abusive, indecent, profane, boisterous, unreasonably loud, or otherwise disorderly conduct. That's the first element that the conduct of the defendant under the circumstances as they existed tended to cause or provoke a disturbance. There was absolutely no disturbance. And then later, she noted that I find that the city has not met its burden with regard to Miss Angus being disorderly, and so I'm going to grant the motion, and this citation will be dismissed. I don't have to address the other concerns and arguments that are made about election integrity because I don't find that Miss Angus's behavior was disorderly. But I will observe that it does appear that this municipal type citation was retaliatory due to the Wisconsin elections complaint that was filed. And then she goes on to, to lay out the, the time frame. Um, I will have some communications later tonight to address this, but this, this fiasco really should disturb anyone who values democracy over tyranny. We cannot have a government that seeks retaliation on its own citizens for speaking up and pointing out inappropriate or illegal activity. I would expect there's an apology forthcoming. And I will ask this body for an external HR review of actions taken and by whom to determine an appropriate personnel response. This cannot be met by silence. This cannot go unchallenged. Thank you. Any other announcements? Can you do two? All right, that's okay. Mm -mm. All right. We will move along to recognitions and awards. Uh, so this is a fun one. In recognition of Mark Retzloff, Senior Mechanic, Green Bay Metro Fire Department, on earning the runner-up award for Emergency Vehicle Technician of the Year. Um, so I had the opportunity to, to congratulate Mark before uh, before our council tonight, uh, but I know that our chief has, has some words as well. He's uh, been singing the praises, not just of Mark, but the whole team um, since he joined our fire department. Um, but uh, congratulations to Mark, and I'll, I'll turn things over to, uh, to Chief Knott for some further comments. Great, thank you very much. So please join me in congratulating Mark Retzloff, our senior mechanic, on his selection as a finalist for the 2023 Emergency Vehicle Technician of the Year Award. This is a national level award from Firehouse Magazine and the Fire Department Safety Officers Association. Mark was selected out of 36 nominations for this, this award this year. We're all proud of the work our mechanics do each and every day to keep our organization operating at such a high level. Matt and Mark, so Matt is here, our other mechanic, uh, are, perform at such a high level for us. They're both specially trained as ASE certified mechanics and then also as emergency vehicle technicians. These certifications and their required training allow them to diagnose and repair our special and complex apparatus and really make that look easy. They, uh, in addition, they're able to conduct warranty work approved by manufacturers that would otherwise take, require extensive out of service time and then complicated <coughs> logistics to make those repairs elsewhere. So we're really proud of Mark and all the work that he does each and every day. Our firefighters are super supportive of him and all of the work that is done at our maintenance facility. So presenting this award from Firehouse Magazine is a 2023 Emergency Vehicle Technician of the Year Award finalist, Mark. since the chief and the command staff uh, informed me I was getting this award, I've been pretty much speechless, and I'm still speechless to this day. <laughs> um, this is a huge honor, and it means the world to me. So I'd just like to thank everybody that made this happen. So thank you. All right. Thanks, and congratulations again, Mark. Um, we'll now move along to appointments. We have some reappointments. Motion to Alder Scandal makes a motion to uh, approve these reappointments. Second. Seconded by Alder Johnson. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Those reappointments are made. <coughs> Ordinance is second reading for adoption. Motion to suspend it. 
Motion to suspend the rules. I'm imagining we might need to exclude. No. Are we all good on these? Because I, I just know that item five has some discussion further in the agenda. Yeah, we should pull. So we'll, um, we will approve uh, your, your motion, Alder Scannell, is to take up one through four. One through four and six. With one roll call vote, is there a second for that? Seconded by Alder Morgan. Uh, any discussion? All in favor will say aye. Aye. Oppose nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to adopt by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will use the, uh, yep, Alder Johnson. Yeah, I just, just need to be clear that I need to abstain from this. Oh, I'm sorry, we're, in, we're still voting on the other We're election. excluding, yeah. Sorry, never mind. That's okay. Uh, we'll use the, the board on that vote. And Can this vote? is Thank you. one through four and six. are uh, adopted unanimously uh, now we've got k5 um, so this is a zoning ordinance number 03-24 an ordinance zoning certain land known as southwest wood subdivision as a plan unit development district um, alder eck and I, I see that it was under second reading but i thought we had pulled it last time because we held it i am not recollecting exactly the procedure there i don't know if uh director rainier wig or grenier you do? Uh, yeah, so we'll go to Mr. Buck. This is the zoning ordinance for the PMU. That went, it was on first reading last week. We sent it. This one forward, it's the, res, last the, for the last reading last week. the last reading last week. So this so is the last the last reading last week. This is the last reading last week. This is the last reading last week. This is the the resolution. So, yeah. so we're okay to pass this one. <laughs> well, it, it's up to you. I mean, they kind of no, go, to, they kinda go together. It's not connected. I just want to make sure. <laughs> so. Right, but is the contingency with respect to the TIA associated with this item? Okay, so we might want to um, put this farther down on the agenda, or we could just have the discussion now. What? Okay, and maybe we'll just go to Director Grenier. Um, I know there's some comments with respect to the TIA that was um, done by the developer. Correct, Mayor. The, there are some issues that are remain unresolved relative to the TIA. I did have a brief discussion with the developer earlier tonight uh, before the meeting. I think we would have been able to resolve this prior to our next regularly scheduled meeting on the 20th. However, because of the election, that next meeting was not going to be until the 5th of March. And the developer has indicated to me that uh, March 5th would work for him. So we'd just like to have that, that time to work out the last couple of kinks. Uh, that we don't have resolved right now. Okay, so the motion here would be to hold this item until March 5th? Until March 5th, correct. Okay. Yeah, make a motion to hold it till March 5th. Okay, Alder Eck makes a motion to hold this item until March 5th, seconded by Alder Stoyer, Alder Johnson. Yeah, just, just to clarify, Mayor, because the applicant is a member of my executive committee, I need to abstain on this one and a whole bunch of others that are all related to the same exact item. Yes. All so. right, sounds good, thank you. Alder, um, Mr. Like Bader, anything, anything to, okay, <laughs> very good. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Any additional comments on that? Seeing none, we will use the board. Oh. Or do we have to on a hold? It's a, uh, yeah, you, I don't, you don't have to. Yeah. No, all in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And that ordinance is held over till our next meeting. On to the report of the Improvement and Services Committee. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Weary. Items here to be handled separately. None. All in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Report of the Protection and Policy Committee. So moved. Alder Scannell makes a motion to approve, seconded by Alder Stevens. Items here to be handled separately. Item four. Item four. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item four. Your wishes on item four? Motion to approve, Motion to approve made by Alder uh, Galvin. Second. 
Okay. Seconded by Alder Johnson. Item was pulled by Alder Eck. Uh, there's some people that want to speak on it, so motion to open the floor. Alder Eck makes a motion to open the floor. Seconded by Alder Campbell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Please feel free to approach the podium. State your name and address if you'd like to speak to this, which is uh, to repeal the Broadway, Downtown, and Old Main moratoriums. Anyone like to speak to this? Right here. Um, my name is Tara Hansen, and I'm the new uh, Brown County president for the Tavern League. And I just wanted to say that we are in agreement um, of, the, of this motion. Okay, very good. And your address for oh, I'm sorry. your establishment? or uh, 1238 State Street. Okay, very good. Any very questions good. for Ms. Hansen? None? Great. Thanks for your testimony. Appreciate the brevity. Um, anyone else who would like to speak? All right. Entertain a motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Close the floor made by Alder Sawyer, seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Uh, the ayes have it. Floor is closed. Um, do we have a motion on that? Yeah, motion, motion has been made to approve. It, it's been seconded. Any uh, conversation? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That item has been approved. Report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operate, <coughs> excuse me, operator licenses. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Uh, this is on granting operator licenses. Um, uh, so the motion was made by Alder Scannell. We have a second? Second by Alder Stoyer. Any uh, abstentions or names to be handled separately? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Now we're on plan commission. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Hutchison. Items here? Number two, two and three. Any others? Items two and three will be handled separately. All in favor of approving the remainder of that report? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of items two and three. Our wishes on item two. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Johnson. Item was pulled by uh, Alder Campbell. I'd like to make a motion to open the floor. There's people here to speak on behalf. Second. Motion to open the floor made by Alder Campbell. Seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Floor is open. Um, so this is to approve a request for a conditional use permit to create a communication tower in the BP Business Park District at 1931 Coffrin Road. So if anyone would like to speak to that item, just approach the podium and state your name and address. Online. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mike Beenick. I'm with a company called LCC Telecom Services. We represent Vertical Bridge and Cellcom. We are located at 10700 West Higgins Road, Suite 240, Rosemont, Illinois. I am the applicant. Um, we came through the plan commission with a unanimous recommendation for approval. We provided all the documents uh, for, for this site. Um, basically, I, I can give you an overview, or do you, do you want me to, or just answer questions? Yeah, if you want to provide a brief overview, you've got about sure. three minutes. Sure. So what, what's happening is Cellcom is currently located uh, two, or two or three lots to the east of this. They have an existing cell tower on that site. Um, and basically, Cellcom wanted to upgrade their equipment. However, that tower was not structurally capable. So the equipment on that tower currently is outdated. And so Cellcom reached out to Vertical Bridge, who is a tower company, and basically asked them to <laughs> they asked them to build a new tower for them. Uh, we provided the information uh, outlining what this, you know, that the existing tower is structurally incapable in the application. And we found a, a willing landlord located on this property at 1931 Coffrin. And so that is what we are proposing to do. There are no other towers in the area that could utilize or that Cellcom could utilize to co-locate on and essentially we meet all the the standards in the the city's ordinance as well as section 66 0404 which is the Wisconsin state statute that go 
oversees the governance of uh, cell towers. So if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them, as well as if anyone else has comments, I would be willing and able to uh, answer those questions as well. Okay, very good. Any questions? Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for coming in. Um, you know, on the conditional use, there are some standards that they were talking about to the establishment, maintenance, and op or operation of the conditional use will not be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare. So my question to you is, um, do you feel that the facility will not be detrimental to or endanger public health, safety, or general welfare in any way? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. It will protect the That'll health and correct. safety. It will not be detrimental. Um, in fact, we provided in our application a, a response to that. And essentially, um, it won't be simply because um, the carriers all are granted their license through the FCC. Therefore, they allocate uh, specific frequencies that the carriers operate under. And therefore, there's no interference with other um, forms of communication or equipment or anything like that. And being allowing Cellcom to upgrade their equipment to the the um, standard that is set forth today is important um, because what happens is after a while, for example, we're at the 5G level right now. The 3G level has been since uh, sunlighted. So essentially, if you if you don't allow these towers to be upgraded. You, not the towers, the equipment on the towers, then it becomes obsolete. So it's very important that, and, and that's a benefit to the community because you're gonna need um, you know, the services. And it, it doesn't just cover immediately in this area. It covers, you know, um, in an urban area like this, it typically covers about one to, one to three miles, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less, depending on the volume at the site. So with everyone getting rid of uh, landlines, it becomes very important. So it's actually a benefit to the health and safety of the general public. And I know that you know towers are built safe, et cetera, but there's always a chance for some problem, you know, electric strikes, different things like that. Do you feel that you know the way it's set up that everything will be fine? Absolutely. Um, as far as electric strikes, it's actually safest to be near a cell tower because they they have um, this one is being built at 155 feet and they'll have a four foot lightning rod on the top of it so what happens is these the equipment that they have on these towers is very expensive so they don't want it to be hit so that lightning rod that sticks up above catches the lightning strikes and they do strike from time to time and then inside the tower they have the, the cabling that goes to a grounding wire in the ground. So essentially, it, it's grounded. So it, it attracts the lightning strikes. So if you're in the vicinity of it, you're actually safer. OK, thank you. Thanks. Alder Eck and then Alder Campbell. Um, thank you for coming in. Um, I noticed there was a public hearing on January 22nd, and were you able to attend that? I was there. And yes. what was the general consensus of those who attended, as far as the public? There were a couple that had questions, um, concerns, um, but I, I believe I answered all those. Um, the lightning strike was uh, an issue. Um, concerns with equipment in the buildings that they occupy in adjacent and, and were you again, able to attend that and, and what was the general one second we're got them muted okay you can continue sir. and the same thing i answered basically the same type of question the fcc allocates the spectrum that they the carriers operate under and they're not allowed to interfere with other forms of communication or electronics or anything like that and if there was any issues then the FCC could mandate that they fix it or lose, technically lose their license, which they're not going to do. So those are the two um, main points. The other one was uh, resale property values, and I don't believe there's any, you know, we're in a business park, so it's not going to inhibit property values. The other concern was the 5G. Um, that's always a question that comes up. 
and I'm sure you've all heard about the, the fight, not fights, but discussions between the, the wireless net um, bit ordinance, our wireless industry and the airlines. And essentially the, the issue with the 5G is only within very close proximity to major airports. And it was just interfering with um, some of the flight communications. And we're far enough away from the airport that it would not do anything. So 5G is just, a, it's a fifth generation. That's all that 5G stands for. It's a faster um, level of communication and it includes more broadband type speeds. So that's, those were the main questions that we addressed. But otherwise, in the lightning rod, I, I think I said that. Um, yeah, that was about it. So. Okay, thank you. Right. Thanks, Alder Campbell, and then Alder Grant. Yes, thanks for coming in again. Certainly. Um, trying to bring this to light, you know. I think this is, you know, 5G, 2G, 5G, 3G. You know, it's all new stuff to everybody. So, you know, if anything, we're all learning a little bit, and you seem to be the guy with all the answers. But there still can be speculation and us trusting you with these answers and where they come from, okay? So there, that, that's, I think, the unknown and why everyone's concerned with it, okay? So, you know, this might not be, but I'll get to, so how many towers in Green Bay are 5G and are your company associated with? Well, there's no such thing as a 5G tower. It's the I, equipment I that it, no, I'm not trying to, I'm just clarifying. Right. It's the equipment. And so each carrier can have equipment. So you could have one tower that has three or four carriers and each of them has 5G. Um, we don't own towers. I'm a consultant for Vertical Bridge. So I don't have any towers and I don't know of all the sites that Vertical Bridge or Cellcom are on. I don't have an inventory of it. But the, the carriers are, you know, they make their determination what what technology they want to use and need to use on their, their sites. So I can't really answer that question. So being that you're the builder of these towers, how, and you know, I don't understand where you have all this data then that supports nothing that you're really involved in other than you erect the towers. Um, the, the information I have is I've been doing wireless for over 24 years, almost 25 years specializing in the zoning aspect of it. So I make these presentations usually about two, three times a week. So I'm pretty much up to date with what's going on. Um, I don't keep inventory of where the, the sites are located. We do sites for Vertical Bridge. We're hired as a consultant, um, basically from Green Bay to Wausau, all the way up through the Upper Peninsula. And I've done sites all over the country. So that's where I get my knowledge from. I'm, I'm sure you gather a lot of that, you know. So um, uh, I guess that's all I have for right now. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Alder Grant? And you mentioned there was a tower a couple blocks away, an existing one that they can't upgrade? A couple uh, lots, not blocks. Or lots, sorry. Yes. Do you know what the intentions are with that? Are they going to take the equipment from that and move it over? The equipment for Cellcom will move over. Well, they probably actually won't move the equipment over. They'll probably get rid of that equipment and put new equipment on the new tower. But they'll take the equipment off the old tower. So that, in, that kind of came up a little bit in the plan commission and uh, staff addressed it that basically your ordinance says that the, we don't own that tower, so <coughs> Vertical Bridge doesn't own that tower. It's owned by the property owner. But I believe it's a year, if it's not used, it has to be taken okay. down. Okay. But if it is used, it can stay up. Do you know how many other companies are utilizing that tower? No one. Okay. Yeah, it's just Cellcom right now. It's, oh. it's not a cell tower, it's just a tower. Sure. that Cellcom uses. So I guess you can call it a cell tower, but. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. All right, thanks, Alder. Any other questions? Alder Campbell for a second time. I remember my other question here. So um, I guess we'll hear some concerns of the businesses that employ 
a lot of people down this district and you know I don't know if they will be satisfied with what you can give them here and, and I think that's why we're all here but have you ever seen and what if something happens and this moves forward what fallout might be of it if there's an issue or a problem and yes, how sir. do we address that when it I mean, how long do you plan for this? You're not the builder, but you, do you actually put the equipment up on the tower? Cellcom would. Okay. So, yeah, there's, there's a lease in place, and I'm not sure the exact duration. Typically, they're 30 to 50 years. So this tower would be able to stand in place for that duration. And then if there was ever the need to replace the tower, we would come back through you guys again and request to replace that tower so so I'm asking for the people concerned what if it does interfere with their machinery and their data and all that I mean I know you say it doesn't but what if it does I mean what is our recourse here to uh, to contact the FCC file a complaint and they would investigate so in the meantime they have to shut down production lay off people that run those machines that's what I'm getting at. Well, those, those complaints are typically handled quickly. I can't speak for the FCC, but... That's okay, that's cool. all. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Any, uh, Alder Johnson. Yeah, thank you for uh, answering a number of the questions. You erect towers all over the country? Yes, sir. And you said you do these two to three times a week, so you have experience with a lot of towers all over the place. Correct. Not, not necessarily two to three, but that's just, you know, sure. no, ballpark. No. Yes. So in your experience, um, I guess, can you ever recall a time when a tower interfered with a business, with an airplane, with uh, any number of the concerns, I guess, that were brought up with, by some folks at the Plant Commission? No. You can never recall one single incident no. where that was I a problem? I have never heard of any of that. No. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other questions for our guests? Appreciate your testimony. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we might have somebody online. Oh, other folks in. Okay. Any other folks who'd like to speak on this item? Yeah. Feel free to approach the podium. State your name and address. Charles Bame. Um, the address that I occupy, work out of is 2020 Radisson Street. I actually have some questions for him that he could possibly answer. So. It's not typically how, how we do things, so if you oh. just want to provide comments to the council. Okay, I guess uh, the information that I downloaded off the internet <clears throat> and information from my uncle that worked for the U.S. Navy using cellular radio waves because that's what it is, and most people don't know that from 3G, 4G, 5G, that the percentage of radio waves are eight to nine hundred percent more and basically it does cause health issues within a close um, proximity which would be two miles it's been known proven um, but I guess uh, a lot of people aren't aware of it and of course there's uh, lots of money in cell towers everything else it's, uh, I have tons of documents here that if you guys would like to read it, it's 30 pages, so you might want to get a steak dinner and have a cocktail so you can read it. And you totally understand what, you know, this might mean to some of the businesses and whatnot around. So basically, uh, I'm not sure if he's aware of the radio waves again, radiation waves, and what he was talking uh, side waves or whatever, those are actually more potent because they travel at an angle than the ones that bounce up and down. But there's a lot of scientific um, experiments that have been done with it and knowledge that, you know, too much radiation is not good, even though it does fight cancer, but it also causes it. But that's all I have to say. And okay. uh, just, uh, just one, one sure, sec. Sure. Appreciate the, the comments. Uh, we got a question from Alder Scannell. Yes. Have you notified the FCC with all your information? Um, no, that's all the um, 
a lot of the documents that came from the FCC back in 2014, 1996. They're aware of it, they know about it. Um, you can download all the information, or I can just give you that packet too, and you can read it. So the FCC. I mean, we don't know if it's completely true because the other thing is there's so much money in cellular internet, and we all love it. I mean, we probably can't live without it, but I can guarantee. Most of you wouldn't want it in your backyard. Uh, so, but the FCC is aware then, as far as you know. You, 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 oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they, they know okay, about That's this. all I need to know. Yeah, they know yep. about it. Thank you. You can read the documents. Yep, yep. Okay. okay. Thanks. All. Anybody else? Any questions? Questions from our council? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other testimony? Andrews, 2020 Radisson Street. Built that building in 1992. Um, if you look at the what you sent out from the city, okay, where your proposed driveway is on the side of his building, all of his Torah Park cars on the front parking lot, okay, you can't even get to that driveway. Now, I guess what I'm questioning is, um, has Jose Gonzalez been here to any of these meetings to find out what all of his neighbors think? Why wasn't he invited? Sir, if you just want to address your comments to the council here. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Um, the comment I have, okay, is what Charlie brought up with the radiation, okay? If Jose knew of what his neighbors think of what's going on here, I think he'd have a whole different opinion on things, all right? I don't understand why he has not been to one of these meetings. It's like you're trying to ramrod it through without him representing himself. And, you know, I'm speaking negative, okay, he might be all in favor of it. I don't think he would be. I've known him for quite a while, okay? Um, the other thing is, it's to all the neighbors in the area. They're not going to come here and start stalking around, okay? I should have been here for the first one and didn't make it, okay? My comment is, with this tower, take it and put it on Renard Island and kill all the cormorants. That's what you should do. Questions? It's county property, but um, any questions? <laughs> uh, Alder Burnett. Sir, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here, expressing your opinion. I do have a question, though. This is Alderman. We um, get in the middle of a lot of neighborhood issues, disputes. Mm -hmm. You had asked if the gentleman who owns the property was here or invited here. Have you initiated a conversation with him directly no, to not. share your concerns? Last on a business deal about maybe four months ago, fixing his heating system, yes. But not specifically no. about the issue? No. Okay. Thank you. Charlie might have. Okay. okay. Any other questions for a guest? Yeah, I'll direct. Um, were you able to make it to that public hearing that happened on January 22nd? No, it was at my mother in law's memorial service. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. That's why I'm here today. Okay, thank okay. you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Any others? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other guests to speak? Okay. Tom Duquesne from 1980 Coffrin. Um, I, uh, I was online at the first meeting. Um, Again, the concerns are potential lightning strikes. Trees are non-conductive. 155-foot uh, tower with a lightning rod. Uh, you know, I mean, that's a big lightning rod, shall we say. We have, uh, within the 200-foot range, uh, there's heart design and Peterson's welding. Heart design was on the first time and voice concerns. Um, I don't know if he is today or not. But they both those two companies hire or uh, employ several employees, and they have CNC equipment, so computer numerical controlled, you know, automated machines inside their building, and those are very expensive. And if they go down, that's bad for the home team. So, with lightning and an ex uh, you know extremely high lightning rod, that's bad. Um, and I do believe it would decrease the property value 
and mine went up quite a bit last year, or two years ago. Thank you very much. Um, and then there's health concerns with radio frequency. So going back to Michael Bennick's, uh the first meeting, uh, and I quote, everything was, well, this isn't a quote, uh, pretty much everything was rosy. Everything is beautiful with these towers. Uh, and he quoted, it said, in a lightning storm, the first place I would go is under a cell tower uh, as they have grounding, you know, lightning rods. Okay, well, if you dig into that a little bit, Noah and OSHA actually have things written about the, uh, you know, 100 million to 1 billion volts that can be generated from lightning. Um, it can create heat up to 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit and six, uh, up to well, from 18,000 to 60,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So camping under a cell tower, he can do it, but I don't think I want to be a fan of it. Um, and then there's uh, other things that Noah says, and I sent this actually to every, uh, every person here in the, in the meeting. Um, but lightning is likely to hit the tallest structures, things like that, and it says one of the recommendations, avoid cell phone towers. So with what Noah is saying and OSHA is saying about lightning and towers and things like that, if Michael Bennick prefers to be under one in a lightning storm, we need to rename him Michael the Lightning Archangel because you wouldn't catch my bum under, <laughs> under that in those circumstances. But point being, there's a lot of equipment in an industrial park running near there. So not a good idea, I don't believe. Um, then there's things about is 5G uh, dangerous? They brought up some points, uh, a lot of things about possibility of carcinic, uh, you know, carcinic to humans and different things like that. Um, and the recommendations at the end is use a local map, be aware where cell towers are and distance is your friend if you're unable to keep an unknown distance for radio frequencies, you should wear a EMF protected clothing. So, and again, as they amp up the 5G and more, it is emitting more ultra, or uh, UF frequency. You know, it has to, to get the signal out. It's just the way life is. And there's a lot of studies that aren't real positive, but when you want to sell a tower or direct a tower, you're you know, given the sales, the car salesman thing that, oh yeah, it's great. You're gonna look good in it and when the tires wobble, it just builds character. <laughs> so, that's my two cents. Any questions? All right, Alder Stoyer. Thank you for coming in. Um, so I think one of the concerns I've heard from some of the opponents is that it's too close to other businesses. Do you have, have you talked or discussed at all of what distance would be comfortable for you for something like that? I realize there's different lots there. Right. And cell towers are everywhere, you know, and, mm -hmm. but have you looked at it or thought about what a good distance would be away from other businesses for a cell tower? One would think a minimum of a quarter mile is what I was told, but, and a lot of times you see them in a cornfield or somewhere else, not, you know, like, like they said, in a backyard. So you, you said about a quarter are. mile would be something. Typically, I believe would. that's what they shoot for. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Other gal. Uh, thank you for coming out, sir. And uh, I did read through some of the material you had, uh, but I'll be honest, I didn't get through all of it. Right. Um, so, do you know what frequencies cause cancer in human beings? I do not specifically know that. Uh, but I'm sure there would be something on it. Okay. I are, do not have Are that. the frequencies being emitted by the cell tower those same frequencies then? I believe so. You think they're the same? The ones that cause cancer is, is what this cell tower emits? Well, radio frequency in general, yes. Well, there's, there's a lot of radio frequencies out there. I mean, I'm, I'm not an electronics guy or anything else, like that, but from what I've read, it's all over the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking, do you know within that spectrum, what frequencies cause it and does this tower emit those same frequencies? That's a great question, but I can't answer it. 
All right. Do you know what frequency shut down machinery or electronics like you're alluding may happen to some of your neighbors? Um, not concerned about the frequency. It's more lightning strikes. So you're, close, you're what, which, what you're afraid of is this lightning strike hits this lightning rod, yeah. which powers down into the ground, just like all our homes and all our businesses, all our water towers, everything has the ability to direct those lightning strikes. And so that causes machinery to shut down? Well, having a lightning rod nearby is going to be more likely to draw lightning to that area. So Whether it's going to uh, a lightning rod or not, if you put, you know, trees which are non-conductive, I mean, anything that's high is going to be a potential to draw lightning towards it, yes. Okay, and so, I mean, are you aware of instances within the city or the county or the state where lightning strikes have shut down machinery, like in business parks, like our I-43 business park, we have a, a lot of companies with a lot of machinery. Um, cell towers, I know for sure, are out there quite a bit. Our hospitals right. have cell towers, uh, right. lightning rods. Uh, have you ever heard of lightning strikes shutting down those facilities or anything like that? I can tell you of a cheese plant that uh, when there's lightning 10 miles out, they fire up their generators because they can't be down. Well, I'm, what cheese. I'm asking, has there been a strike that you can document or show me documentation to, but just shut down any kind of machinery or a plant or anything within this area? Well, I'm sure it does, but I don't have written proof, no. All right, thank you, sir. Thanks, Alder. Any other questions or comments from council? All right, thanks for your testimony. Okay. Anyone else? Sure, if you, if you just want another three minutes maybe to address anything that you've heard, sir. Certainly. And yes, he is correct. I would not stand underneath the tower, but my point was that if you're in proximity of a cell tower, it drives the, the lightning into the ground, so you're safer. I don't mean standing literally under the tower. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, health concerns came up. And one of the things um, in the Federal Telecommunications Act of 1996, it precludes uh, officials from making a determination based on health. And the reason they do that, it's not because they think you, you don't know what you're doing. But as was brought up, there's different types of frequencies. And the FCC is in charge of allocating those frequencies and does, an, over time, constant analyses of what those frequencies are. Um, as was discussed, there's two different types of frequencies. There's ionizing and non-ionizing, and they're completely different. Ionizing is something like in your microwave, where it heats the cells of a body. So that could cause cancer. You obviously don't want to put your head up against the microwave watching the popcorn pop. It's not good for you. Whereas a cell signal is a non-ionizing, which basically means it's non, it doesn't heat up the cells of the body. He referenced the fact that there's a distance that you have to be. Yes, there is. You don't want to be standing within about four feet of that uh, equipment, the uh, antennas, not the ground equipment, but the antennas for a prolonged period of time. And that does not mean at the ground in front of those antennas. That means 155 feet in the air standing within four feet. That's the only way you would have, it's called uh, a headache, uh, basically a, a <coughs> headache that you would get. And it would not affect your body other than you get a little headache. So there are warning signs behind the equipment on uh, rooftops and stuff like that don't stand too close and that again you'd have to be in front of the equipment so um, that's basically and again I, I reiterate the fact that the energy is grounded from the lightning strikes so it's not going to just spew out to um, you know other businesses in the area um, the quarter mile from businesses I believe it was mentioned by one of the commissioners that there are other cell towers within this business park. We have sites in uh, De Pere's business park 
um, that recently got built. So it's not uncommon to have in a business park, and I don't know where the quarter mile, there's no magic number um, as far as separation goes. That's just some random number. So I believe that's really the, the main things. Um, like I said, the, the health issues, they're all governed by the FCC. Okay, thanks for your additional testimony. Any other questions? Alder Gavin. So How many years have you been doing this, sir? Almost 25. 25, 100 towers a year? Probably so, if not more. Yeah. So a couple of thousand now? Yeah. Have you ever been hired to take one down because it was causing injury to people or damage to nearby machinery? No. Have you ever heard of one that was taken down for that purpose? No. So four feet and don't stand in front of the equipment, correct? Just the, equip the antennas. The ground equipment is safe. Right. So by putting it up 150 feet, we've already got a 140-foot buffer, roughly, more than we need. Correct. Okay. And then... The power goes, the lightning strike goes down into the ground where it's dissipated. And okay. you've never heard of any machinery, businesses? No, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Morgan. Apparently, there's uh, already this tower at the Cellcom building. Has there been any discussion as to why they don't just build another one on their property? That Obviously, the people haven't had problems with where it's at now. Yeah, it's, it's all about location. Cell, cell sites, what, what happens is Cellcom is literally a couple <coughs> lots down. They need to replicate and cover in that area. So going at, you know, however far away isn't going to work. It's going to leave a gap at that point. So they needed to be within a couple buildings away because they already have the existing coverage that they need to fill. And, and that's basically why they're looking in this very specific area. So we're looking at a few hundred feet away. If, Correct. And that'll change the coverage that much? No, that's my point. They have coverage, but they can't upgrade their equipment to stay current with the technology. I understand that. I'm just saying, why couldn't they build another tower there and put the 5G equipment on that tower and then disable the other one? because we don't have a lease agreement with them. So this, you're not doing this for Cellcom? We are, but Cellcom doesn't have a lease to build a new tower. Vertical Bridge would have to have a lease with that property owner to build a second tower. The property's not owned by Cellcom? No. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other questions? All right, Alder Campbell. I mean, I don't know what you consider a health problem, but I think a headache of any, for any reason is a concern. That's why you take medication to get rid of it. I think you'd have a bigger concern if you had someone standing within four feet of the antennas, because then they'd be up at the 155 foot level. So that means they probably climbed up there illegally. So it, it has to be at the level of the, the antennas, not standing on the ground. I mean, we do see lightning go sideways all the time, you know, from a long way away. So if you were in the path of that or anything was in the path of that. Yeah, it could hit a tree too. I mean, it, it's I mean, we're, we're just talking about item, you know, examples. No one, no one can say that, but you have said that they can cause health problems immediately you would have a headache that's immediately what 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 about long term you know i mean this is just proposition that you're throwing us and we're supposed to believe it i'd like to see the you know, the, the order, literature Honor, alder scannell what's your point of order this whole thing is out of order we are here for a conditional use permit we are not here we have no authority even if these gentlemen we agree with you we have no authority here to do anything about this power we can do a conditional use permit. That's all. All we have to do is look at the, the permit, and is this permit acceptable? Can we massage it? What can we do? We have no authority in this junction. If you have concerns, health concerns about these things, if you have concerns about placement, you need to go to the state legislature. You need to go to the FCC. We, as a body, we are very limited in what we can do. What we can do is a conditional use permit, 
and none of this discussion has been on that permit. So we are completely out of order, this whole thing. Thank you, Alder. Alder Campbell? No, I just was going to say, where are you going with this? Um, you know, point of order is you got to the point, and then you rambled on on it. So I have nothing. I explained okay. it. All right. Any other questions for our guests? Just one. Alder Johnson? Thank you. To your, uh, you obviously have extensive knowledge of the state law around this, and, and of course what FCC, federal government, regulates. Does this body, local city council, have any authority to regulate or legislate anything around 5G services? No. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Thanks again for your testimony, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. If we don't have any other guests, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to close the floor. Anybody online, uh, Chief Folds, that you're seeing? Okay. Motion closed floor made by Alder Galvin. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. We do have a motion to approve on the floor and a second. Uh, Alder Campbell, on that motion. So I just have some questions for staff. Um, being, uh, can you state some of the uh, compliance city municipal code 44-1586B to uh, I think at the public hearing this wasn't completely done yet and there were still a few things. Can I get some explanation on it? A question for Mr. Buck or? Um, the section you're referring to, 441586, is our municipal code for public service and utility uses. It's the land development standards. Um, it's extensive if you want me to read it. It's kind of long. Uh, but it addresses um, basically um, where towers can go, uh, proposed commercial support structure design, um, what setbacks would be, what signage they're allowed to have, lighting, security and landscaping, abandonment, uh, interference, obstruction, if you're in an airport zone, um, and data sharing. So uh, I would like to point out, however, that this code was written prior to um, some changes at the state level um, and so there's sections of this code that may not be um, enforceable enforceable yeah 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 my question though was there was I think you made the comment there was a few things more to work out we didn't really go over that part but Thanks was there or on. wasn't there no I, I, this one has a couple conditions on it one with the Petition did not have a parking space for a service employee. There's no employees there all the time, but a service employee, so that was a condition of approval. Um, we also had a condition of a paved access way. The existing lot is a gravel lot, gravel parking lot. I think you mentioned that there's cars parked there quite a bit, so they have to keep an open way to that, though they are infrequently accessed. Um, and in this case, being in the back of an industrial building in an in a industrial park, um, there were very few other conditions staffs had recommended. Other applications where they're in residential neighborhoods, single family neighborhoods or whatnot, um, and a good example is one that we just had at Humboldt, we required additional ground cover screening um, for some of their equipment. So again, the conditional uses are really the, the uses of permitted use with the council being able to put conditions on its performance. Now there's certain things uh, that were mentioned here before, health concerns that are beyond our, our Judgment. I mean, that's an F that's a federal and a state uh, regulation, and there's other things too. So our code may only allow it in certain districts. Ours does not; it allows it everywhere. <coughs> uh, state statutes now says it has to be allowed everywhere. You can't exclude it from any zoning district. So um, there is a lot of legislation that sits on top of this, well above our municipal code. Uh, not at the meeting, but out in the hall, we had some after discussion. Uh, and you, and you made that clear that, that we really didn't have much. And I think you stated, we really wish we did have more. And so we could regulate it a little bit closer because anytime we get too many of anything in one area and you know, it's a little bit of an overabundance. So, you know, it was good constructive uh, conversation. And uh, I just, at that time thought that everything wasn't quite all ironed out on it. And so I was wondering if that got taken care of. And I would agree with you, and I would only ask, and I think I asked, you know, if there is a situation down the road, whether, so does, does the city municipal uh, code, if it's broken, have 
where does it come in on the authority of it? it I'm sure it has to be started by the FCC. So well, the, when does that get handed back to the city? Sure, the, the antenna and the equipment on the antenna are going to be all uh, FCC regulated. The structure itself, we can regulate. I mean, if it's rusting, we can require it to be painted. Well, just like any other structure, any other type of building maintenance um, or site <coughs> maintenance, the city would get involved to, uh, to um, bring it up to, up, back up to code. Sure, and I like your attention to, I wish we had more to go on because we could probably better regulate it. Uh, to to our to what the people's needs are too. So thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder, where? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, just to piggyback on that, it it is almost cruel the way <clears throat> these come through, and I think people believe there's some some ability for us to to work on it. And it used to be. I remember back my my first decade, <laughs> we we could uh, have neighborhood meetings and say yes, no to cell towers or. CBRFs, community-based residential facilities, uh, or short-term rentals. So those are all things that we could have control over, and the state has slowly wrestled that away from us. And you know, for good or for bad, you can have that debate. I, I like local control, but um, we can't. And, and for the health part, that is the FCC. Um, they control that. I would love to, f you know me, I would love to find a way forward if there was. Um, we petitioned things before, but you know, on this one, I think we're, we're kind of locked in. If they meet at the requirements, we can do some things around the sides to make it better. There's limited what we can do, and uh, that's what it is. All right, any other comments? Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that item has been approved. On to item three. Motion to approve. Uh, motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Or second? second? Second. by Alder Galvin. That was pulled by Alder Eck. I think this is probably also a hold. Uh, yeah, a uh, motion to hold until the March 5th meeting, please. All right. Alder Eck makes a motion to hold this item until uh, March 5th. That was seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That second. item is held. Uh, Alder Johnson notes an abstention. Um, we're on the Finance Committee. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Items here to be handled separately. Okay. Uh, Alder Johnson. Abstention on 18. Alder Johnson notes an abstention on item 18. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of the report will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Personnel committee. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Uh, any items here to be handled separately? No? All right, hearing none, all in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. TBMP? Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Um, we don't have any items under sustainability. Informational building report for January 24 is included in your packet. On to resolutions. Motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. Are we taking all of them or any here? I'm trying to remember. Was there one on the um, All but 24 and 26. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Second. To suspend the rules for every one of those items except for 24. Alder Scannell makes motion to suspend the rules, take up all of those items. Uh, with the exceptions noted, seconded by Alder Johnson, or you, yeah, uh, seconded by Alder Johnson. <laughs> Just want to make sure you didn't have to abstain from that. Um, all in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to adopt, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Brunette. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll use the board. You made up. Those resolutions are adopted unanimously. The whole item 24 26 on our March 5th. Meeting. Alder Scandal makes a motion to hold uh, items 24 and 26 until our March 5th meeting, seconded by Alder Weary. 
All in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Alder Johnson abstains. Ordinance is first reading. Motion to advance. Second. Motion to advance made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. And that item has been advanced to a second and final reading. Uh, petitions and communications. Alder Way. I have a couple. My apologies. I tried to submit them online, and we had some technical issues that we couldn't resolve in the last 24 hours, so I had to do it by paper. Um, to protection and policy, request the city return to the process of department heads being confirmed every two years by the city council instead of being permanently appointed. Protection and policy, I'm requesting the city clerk's office allow election observers to witness the processing of absentee ballots from receipt of ballots from the county clerk through completion of the process on election night and then personnel committee request an external HR investigation be initiated regarding the apparent retaliatory disorderly conduct charge filed versus Janet Angus attorney Janet Angus after she submitted a valid after she submitted a valid election complaint to the WEC I request the City Council consider disciplinary measures for any employees who engaged in this type of government retaliation against one of its citizens thank you any others Entertain a motion. There needs to be a motion to refer those. Well, I'm aware. <laughs> Is there a motion? <laughs> motion to refer made by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Campbell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Uh, it's been referred. Adjournment. Motion to adjourn made by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Galvin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. We're adjourned.